Hello, I'm Wayne from Talk Cars. So we're going to talk about remaps in this video. If you've had your car remapped, please let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear your experiences, as would most of the other visitors to this channel and our website. We thrive on customer comments. Let us know what car you've got and what mods you've planned to do to it, because that'll help us to build future programs, future articles that Fit you. Welcome to this video. It's going to be an in-depth look at ECUs, particularly ECU remapping. So the car's computer is a pretty busy device. It does an awful lot of stuff inside the engine. So we're going to answer the following questions. What is an engine computer and what's it do? What is a remap? Is it worth getting my car remapped? And what sort of power gains can I expect if I have a remap done on my car? So firstly, let's look at the ECU. We said it was busy and it, it certainly is. It's got so many factors to take into account. It's got to keep the air fuel ratio exactly right. The perfect ratio for it to maintain is around 14.1 to one. So that's 14.1 buckets of air to one bucket of fuel or whatever unit you happen to be working in. When the engine is cold, it needs to adjust that ratio slightly. So it drops to 13 to one. And if the engine is warmed up and you want to get the maximum fuel economy from it, you've got to change the ratio to 16.1, which is going towards the lean end. So the engine computer has all this information coming into it. The various sensors around the engine tell it how much oxygen is in the air that comes into the engine. So it looks at the temperature of the incoming air. We know that cold air is heavier than warmer air, so it, it takes that into account. It also looks at the fuel. Now, each time you fill up from a different petrol station, you might even choose a different grade of fuel at the pump. The computer has got to work out all of these factors to make sure it's keeping the engine within the correct ratio. And it does all this in microseconds. It looks at the speed the wheels are traveling at, the load, the throttle position. If it's got a turbo, it can control the amount of boost and air coming into the engine. It finally controls the fuel. Depending on how complex the fuel system is in your car, it'll have varying degrees of accuracy when it comes to getting the precise amount of fuel. And if it detects a problem with the burn, it will adjust everything to make sure that you don't have engine knock, which is pre-ignition, which is really detrimental to engines. And it makes sure that you're still running the engine within those correct ratios. So an ECU is certainly very busy, and there's a lot of flexibility already built into it by the manufacturers to make sure that it can cope with extremes in weather conditions, different fuels and various other different conditions it's driven in, as well as the fact that the engine is getting older and more worn and less efficient. Multiply that up to different countries, you've got whole different sets of parameters that it needs to take into account. When they calculate the mapping that's required for all of these various conditions, they leave themselves a pretty wide margin to work in, which means that the car will work efficiently pretty much whatever's thrown at it, however badly looked after the engine is, or whatever rubbish fuel you throw into it. And bear in mind as well that each engine coming out of the factory can be dramatically different. Although they're on the same production line, we're not talking about rocket science levels of engineering going into each engine. We're not on a Formula One team here. On a production car, there is a big difference. Some are, are really good and some engines are shockingly bad. So the ECU map that the manufacturers put into the car takes all of that into account and just keeps everything running quite smoothly. So the fact there's that leeway, it means we've got a little bit of scope to play with. So by altering the mapping, we can reduce that leeway. If you put your car on a rolling road, you get live information as to what the engine is doing and how the fueling is working, and you can adjust it on the fly and really get the best out of it. If you are serious about your performance, you might want to get a map that only works well on the premium fuels, the higher octane fuels, and that will release quite a bit of extra power. So you're pretty much saying, I don't want such a wide leeway. I'm going to do my bit and keep the car in good condition and use good quality fuel and service it more regularly. I just want as much performance as I can possibly get. So what sort of power gains are on offer if we remap an engine? 
Well, looking at a naturally aspirated engine, you will generally see a gain of about 10% across the rev range. Some are better, some are worse. It depends how good the manufacturers have been at setting up the car from the factory. If you've got a turbo engine, it's exponentially more. You'll usually see about 30% on a petrol turbo engine. And if you go to a diesel turbo engine, you can go up to about 40% more power. That's an awful lot of latent power. So getting your car remapped is a bit of a no brainer and makes perfect sense. All you're doing is reducing the threshold manufacturers have built in that leeway for error and you're tightening things up to get the maximum performance of your engine. And if you do get it set up on a rolling road, you can take into account the exact condition of your engine. If there were problems and faults with the engine, they would show up and you can address those to make sure that you're up the top performance for your engine rather than hitting the average that most people go for. On the rolling road, it might show up that there's an issue with the engine. And if you address that, you're no longer restricted to the lower power figures. You can fully realize all of the potential from your engine. So are there any downsides of remapping your car? Well, we've already said that we're reducing the threshold for error. So often when people have a car remapped, they may get some issues. The clutch is usually one of the first things that starts to complain and moan. If there's an issue with the fuel supply or the injectors, you may hit flat spots. It, it may not be as good as you want. If you've got it set up on a rolling road, you'll usually get all of that ironed out anyway. But most people will just go to a remap shop who will download a generic remap, much like the manufacturers pick a, an average, they will pick a generic remap that narrows that error rate, that error ratio that manufacturers build in, but not completely eliminate it. So you're still getting an increase in power, but maybe not as much as getting a custom remap done. So some cars cannot be remapped. The control unit is encoded in such a way that people haven't worked out how to get into it to change the mapping. Thankfully, that's a rare thing. There's usually a nerd out there with time that can get into the ECU, decode it and work out what coding needs to go in. It's something we could theoretically do ourselves if we had the correct software but you really are opening a can of worms. There's so many variables and factors, unless you really know what you're doing and you've got the ability to run complex diagnostics on your tuning, I wouldn't go there. I would rely on someone who knows what they're doing. They will typically perform a remap in about 15 minutes to a couple of hours if it involves a rolling road. Whereas if we do it ourselves, we could be weeks tweaking it and still end up with flat spots. So. Don't go that route. Go to a specialist, someone who knows what they're doing. That will really save money in the long run and remove a lot of hassle from the equation. So if your ECU can't be remapped, you've got some options open to you. You can get a piggyback ECU, which sits between your ECU and all of the components in the engine. So it might take the information and lie a little bit. It might say to the turbo, the ECU wants so many bars of pressure when actually it's asked for slightly less. And it might do the same for the fueling. It might say that the air coming into the engine is warmer or colder than it is to adjust the trim required and extract that extra performance. Most tuning boxes do increase the power, but there are some shockingly bad units out there that just dump more fuel in. All they do is increase the fuel rail pressure. You can usually tell these because they've only got one connection. So if you're looking for a tuning box, try and get one that's got multiple connections to multiple sensors in the engine and they do more than just adjust the fueling. We've seen some really good units that have a bank of maps built in and you can select the maps from one to six and these companies can also adjust it. So if you do a lot of towing and you want a bit of extra torque for towing, they can build that in. So you've got a car set up for how you, you use it. If you just want a really fun car at the weekend on premium fuels, they can maybe drop that map into some of the, the upper slots. 
So it gives you a lot more leeway and a lot more stuff to play with. So we really do like these tuning boxes, but we will say you don't get as good a result as you would if you had a remap. So it's a little bit of a compromise. If you don't want to go the piggyback ECU route, there is another option. You can replace the ECU completely. There's a lot of units there, aftermarket ECUs, that take over completely from the engine computer. And they do a really good job. They're actually usually a lot more modern and a lot more advanced and complex than your engine computer. But be aware that your engine computer detects knock. So if the engine is starting to move into pre-ignition, it will know about it. And we've seen a lot of aftermarket ECUs that don't have that facility, which means you need to be very exact and very precise when setting them up. There's very little margin for error. It's nice to have that little bit of reserve and intelligence where it can adjust itself if it detects a problem. Um, I know a lot about the, the Audis and Volkswagen group, and they used Bosch and Siemens ECUs. And the Bosch ECUs are really good. They're very protective of the engine. They seem to guard everything. And even if you totally screwed up all of the map parameters, it would slot down into a limp home mode. You'd still have an engine that worked. Your power would obviously be reduced, but nothing would be damaged. Whereas on some cars, the ECU is not quite as protective. So if you screw it up, you overboost the engine you run lean you run rich you can cause all sorts of problems one of the issues that you'll get if the mapping is wrong and you're running rich is the catalyst will overheat and burn out as well as building up lots of carbon in the engine and carbon is definitely not your friend you do not want carbon in your intake around your valves and in your engine you're going to end up with hot spots of carbon it's going to impede the airflow and it's going to cause lots of issues so you really do want to make sure that you are running in the correct ratio to get the maximum performance from your car. Please drop us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. We've got some really interesting stuff coming up and we really do want to hear from you. Any topics you want us to cover, any cars you want us to specifically feature or any questions you've got, please drop them down in the comments section. And we review every single one of these and they go on to our schedule so we can work through them and we can just cover the topics that you want to hear about.